Hello and welcome to my studio. In this video, I'm going to show you how I created this image. This image is in fact a combination of two separate photographs. One taken with daylight on a very overcast cloudy day and another taken with flash. By combining the two images together carefully, you can create something which has a bit of a surreal look to it. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. So I found these mushrooms and I thought they'd make a good subject. So one of the techniques I'm going to use here is to get the camera at a low level, almost the same level as the subject. So in order to do that, I'm going to just spread the legs out on this tripod. This is a Manfrotto 055 uh, and it has the uh, option of being able to spread the legs very wide, like so. So once I've spread the legs out that wide, what I can do now is just position the tripod in an arbitrary place. We'll just see what that's like. And now it's time for the camera. So I'm using this full frame digital SLR with a 24 to 70 zoom lens on the front of it. Uh, so what I'll do is just pop this on the tripod and we'll have a go at framing up the shot. So I have a ball head on this tripod, so I can just frame up the shot roughly. We'll zoom in all the way to the 70mm end on the lens. Just roughly focus that. Like that. Now reframe. Check the focus again. Yeah, somewhere around there, I think. Right, so now that's all composed, I can just turn the camera on. And I've got the camera set in manual mode, so manual everything, manual focus uh, and manual shutter and aperture, etc. So initially, I'm just going to set the shutter speed uh, to, what shall we go for, um, hundredth of a second and I'll just set the aperture at f8 and I'll just check that in the viewfinder and I'll just use the camera's meter just to meter it out uh, for the uh, conditions and we'll just take a, a test image. Okay, let's grab an image, check it on the back. Yeah, that doesn't look too bad at all and you could leave it at that but it would be a pretty boring picture. So to give a bit more life to this, what I'm going to do is mix some flash in with the daylight. So here we are, I'm using this Proferto B1X uh, battery uh, powered studio flash uh, for this. This is about 500 uh, joules, possibly a bit big for this application, but nonetheless it will do. So we'll stick this on the top of this stand, which I've previously set up. There we go. I've just got a standard reflector on the front here. So I'll just bring that down a bit just to concentrate the beam. Something like that. And as you can see, it's more or less directly over the top of the subject. So we just turn that on. Now this is initially set to a arbitrary energy level about halfway through the range. So the only other thing that we'll need is a flash sync trigger. So I'll just pop this on the top of the camera. Like so. Okay, so before we get started on that, what I want to do is um, take the exposure down for the daylight uh, for about two or three stops, possibly a bit more than that. Uh, that way I will get a difference between the daylight exposure and the flash exposure. I'll show you what I mean. So we'd ascertained that to get a proper exposure uh, I needed to be at an aperture of 4.5 at 100 ISO and at 100th of a second. Now the flash sync speed for this camera is 1 250th of a second. 
So I could go all the way up to 1 250th of a second without having to resort to high speed sync. So that's the first thing I'm going to do. So I've just changed the shutter speed to 1 250th of a second. We'll just grab an image. Okay, and you can see from that that uh, it is a bit darker, but it's not that much darker really. So now I can alter the aperture and uh, we're at 4.5. Uh, so initially I'll take it to um, f8 and see what that uh, looks like. So we'll just change the aperture to f8 and grab another image. Now that's getting there, that's considerably darker. So that's the sort of thing uh, that I want as a background image. So with those settings then, what I can do now is turn the flash sync trigger on so that it fires the flash. So I'll just do that. And we'll give that a test. There we are, and you can see from that that it's uh, almost right. It probably needs um, maybe another stop of exposure on there. So I'll just select that head, just add a stop on that, and we'll fire that again. Yes, and again, checking that on the back of the camera, that doesn't look too bad at all. So just to make sure, and to give me a choice of densities when I come to do the post-production, what I'm going to do is go up and down a stop with the flash, and up and down a stop without it. So initially then, uh, I'll just add another stop to that and fire that again. Now I'll take two stops off and take that again. And now I'll just turn that head off. We'll just take one without the flash. Like so and this time I can take the uh, shutter speed up uh, by one stop. So that would be one five hundredth of a second. And down by one stop, which is one two five. OK, and as for capturing the image, that's it. So what I'll do now is load up which ones uh, I think I'll need and we'll go into Photoshop to do the post-production. OK, so here we are in Photoshop and I've loaded up two files from all of those that we took earlier outside. This is the one that I've chosen lit by daylight and this is the one lit by flash. OK, so to combine these two I'm going to get Photoshop to make me a stack of those two images. So go to File, come down to Scripts, load files into Stack, add open files, and yes I'll ask it to attempt to automatically align the sources, just saves a bit of time, uh, and just click on OK. There we are. And what that has done is made a stack of two layers over here with a new file at the top. So we're not actually editing those two that I imported. We've got a new one which is made up of these layers. Right, so to combine these two, what I'm going to do is uh, just select the top one here and I'm going to add a layer mask to this. So if I just add the mask like this and then I'm just going to invert that because it will make it a little simpler to uh, follow what's going on. Right, so I have a black mask which is hiding all of this layer. So what I want to do is reveal the bits that I want to um, make use of. So uh, what I'm going to do is just make sure that white is selected as the foreground colour. Uh, go up to uh, brush tool up here. Now I'm going to turn the opacity down from 100% uh, to something like um, 20, 25. Uh, it just gives you a bit more control over what's going on. Right, so now if I just right click I can select the brush size 
So I'll pick a brush which is relatively large, maybe a bit bigger than that. Okay, uh, and just make sure it's very soft. Right, and now what I'm going to do is just paint through on the foreground here, just with single clicks, like that. Now I'm using a single click at a time, uh, so that I can build up the image. Don't forget we have set the opacity to 25%. And don't worry if you make an error, because you can just change the foreground colour back to black again, and just paint that out, like so. Right, so to carry on then, um, what I'm going to do is just add a bit more uh, clarity to this. I'm just going to make the brush a bit smaller. Right, and now just painting in white. That will just reveal that layer. Now I'm doing this relatively quickly just to demonstrate. You could take a bit more time, um, but you get the idea of how it works. So as I just carry on clicking the mouse, I'm building up the density in the mask which is becoming more and more transparent. OK, and then we just use the same technique on the mushrooms themselves. So I'm just going to zoom in ever so slightly, something like that. Go to 100%. If you hold down the space bar on the keyboard, it will turn into a pan tool, so you'll be able to move the image around. OK. So there we go, and now just again, I'm just going to reset the opacity to about 50%, and I'm going to make my brush considerably smaller, but still soft for the time being. There we are. Now this time, I'm not letting go of the mouse, so I've just got 50% going down every time. So if I were to let go of the mouse and do that again, for instance, it would get even more transparent. So you get much more of the underlying image coming through. I'm just following around the shape of the mushroom very roughly. You actually don't need to be very accurate doing this. You can get away with quite a lot of error. Okay, so having done that one, I'll just move on to the next one. And we'll do exactly the same again. And finally, the one on the back. There we go. So now I can just select the magnifying glass there, and I'll just zoom out, like so. And we'll pick a crop. Obviously, mine is destined for video, so I'm picking 16 by 9. I'm going to crop it in quite tightly, something like that, there. And there we have it. So by combining the two exposures, you've ended up with a bit of a different look to some mushrooms in a field. This technique is, of course, open to interpretation in terms of the way you make the mask. There are lots of different ways to automate that process these days. But overall, I think doing it manually gives you a feel for the image. Uh, and I think this has turned out very well. So there we go. Well, I hope you enjoyed seeing how I made that image. And if you like watching these sort of things, do click on the other pictures as they appear. And don't forget to subscribe. Oh, and click the like button. Thank you very much for watching.